Hello again, Hunky Tonks. I hope you're having a great Easter. I certainly am. I mean, if you're a chocoholic like me, then it's like heaven, isn't it? Anyway, it's been a while since I last braved the racist British countryside. Remember John Craven? He used to read News Round back in the day, in the 70s and 80s, when I was a little boy. I feel old now saying that. And he's come out and said there is evidence of racism in the British countryside. What an old fool. What a silly idiot. He's just trying to stay relevant. Or maybe keep his job at the BBC. I think it's the latter. Anyway, <laughs> beards in the army. I have a theory why they're bringing beards back into the army. But I'll tell you that later. Now, the British Army Twitter account published a video the other day and it was fronted by someone who uh, was a, a sergeant major of the British Army. Now, we didn't have that rank again back in my day. I feel old now. I feel really old now. But it's like the Americans. They have like a sergeant major of the army, don't they? So it's weird. And this bloke, he didn't even look like a sergeant major. He looked like someone who ran away from home to buy a loaf of bread for his mother but didn't really return <laughs> he looked like a student he really did looked nothing like Windsor Davis to me that's your archetypal uh, sergeant major and we did have sergeant majors that looked like him again back in my day they look scary for a reason <laughs> Now this guy, this uh, Sergeant Major of the Army, he stood there and said, right, you've said and we've listened, we're bringing beards back. And I thought, fuck me, the army is now a democracy. <laughs> Since when have the army or senior ranks ever listened to the scum? The lower ranks, the privates, the landsjacks, the corporals, the fusiliers, grenadiers, engineers, whatever you want to call them, they never listened. We used to have uh, company meetings and you designate the mouth of all the fusiliers to be like the barrack room lawyer. And you could make all sorts of demands and recommendations to make life easier, but they were never listened to. I mean, this is how much the warrant officers and sergeants mess listened to the corporal's mess. Even though we paid subs every month, they just dip into it, ooh, nearly. <laughs> They dip into it every month to fund their own parties. So there we go, that's what they thought of us. We were quite literally scum. But it's interesting, really, up until now, the only people allowed to wear beards, my understanding, in the army, the British army, were the pioneer sergeants, for some weird reason. I think it was just for show. Uh, some of the Navy lot and special forces personnel. And that's it, but now anyone can uh, have a, a beard. Please excuse this interjection. I've finished my video, but walking back and doing my editing, I nearly forgot. The main reason we were told in the army to shave on a daily basis and keep it smooth and clean was so that it didn't interfere with the seal on the gas masks or the respirators. I never remember calling them respirators, do you? Someone told me off on Twitter for that. <laughs> But same thing, gas mask, respirator. So is the nuclear threat now over? I mean, we're still in an age where the enemy, Russia, China, North Korea, Iran, all the axis of evil countries are so-called. They use these armaments and these armaments carry radiation. Do nuclear weapons still uh, give fallout? I mean, Again, back in my day, I hate saying that, back in my day, if the blast didn't kill you and the heat, then was it the positive and negative waves? The aftershocks? And if they didn't get you, then it was the radiation fallout that killed you. And your uh, NBC suit, nuclear, biological and chemical attack. I can't believe I remember that. Uh, and the gas mask saved you. And if you had a beard on, then the seal on the gas mask wouldn't work and then the poisonous stuff would get in. Am I right? Anyway, back to the video. Now, you could only grow a moustache in a British, in a typical British army regiment back then. I keep saying back then, but you know what I'm talking about. I left the army, I left the mob in 2005. Obviously, 
things have changed. And in my view, for the worse, the army's gone really, really woke big time. But I've made those videos. And I think for them, the top brass, to be all of a sudden listening. Oh, I reckon it's a cover. No, they're not really listening to privates and, and the lower ranks at all. What they're doing is they're making an excuse to recruit people who grow beards as part of their faith or ideology. That's that's my that's my theory. It really is. If you've seen that British Army advert, which I made a video on that as well, they've got a Muslim fella and they, they stop in the middle of a patrol. Whether it be an exercise or a real life patrol, I don't know. But they just break so many life-saving tactical rules, uh, standards of operation in that by doing that and allowing him to have his uh, one of many prayers a day <laughs> in the open. It's just unreal. The army will seemingly break with tradition and, and rules in order to accommodate them. And I think the latest is beards. The army is desperate for personnel. Uh, recruiting process hasn't worked, hasn't gone down well. They're, they're really down on manpower and they're fucking desperate. And look at that, that boot has toes on it. Is this guy turning into a werewolf? Look at that. Look, that's just nuts. So, <laughs> my theory is this, su this sudden acceptance of, on beards and facial hair in general I think it's to recruit these people, these people who grow beards because of their ideology or religion or faith. And it's underhanded really by lying and saying, yeah, we've, we've listened to you all. In fact, they haven't, have they? It's just a cover. It's just a lie, a big, massive fuck off lie to make it happen and make the army more attractive to these people. Of course, it's not the army doing this. It's politicians isn't it it's the ministry of defense the ministry of defense employs a number of people for the sole reason of promoting diversity multiculturalism basically dei diversity equity and equality equity diversity dei diversity equity inclusion <laughs> That's what happens when you make these videos on the fly. Oh, don't do that. So there we go, that's my theory. Beards are suddenly in. Next thing you know, they'll, they'll make it even more open and they'll drop standards even more because they're desperate for people and they want people who tick boxes in order to say, look how woke we are and inclusive and all that bollocks. That's my theory. Do you agree? Or not, let me know in the comments. And that's that. I'm off to eat my Easter eggs now. And there's shit loads of Easter eggs on the table. I mean, there's only three of us, but there's like 12 of them. 12, there's more than 12. One, two, yeah, there's shit loads of Easter eggs. That's how popular we are. Anyway, I'm off. Thanks for listening. I'm Paz49, and until the next time, Roger Trout.